So I suspect that if uh, you invite me to this panel, it's really to explain that out of the fundamental sciences, we as a company, we are exactly doing, taking full benefit of that, right? We are uh, leveraging at best what we call applied sciences. And that's what we do for the last 30 years. Now to put some concrete ideas behind that, uh, I will start, for example, by the first all-in-one computers we've done, it was actually 10 years ago, the iMac. This is a product that we've been able to use because we started to have a better comprehension of how to use uh, some basic stuff like the plastics, right? Uh, thanks to that, we've been able to mold polycarbonates in one fits all of our uh, computers. And we've been able to miniaturize that in a different ways. Obviously, as early as 99s, we used the chips that you were talking uh, you there on uh, communications to launch the first Wi-Fi, which is becoming today a standard. But again, this is about concrete applied sciences that we were putting into the hands of many more people. Now, closer to us, in 2001, in October, when we launched the first iPod, you may recall that what was the real revolution there was of twofold, maybe threefold was the fact that you were putting basically a hard drives of the size of, of uh, such iPhones, that this hard drive at that stage was able to contain up to five gigabytes. On that, we're adding essentially some physics to be able to leverage the technology of navigating through the device. And yes, we had also to write codes, software. You can debate whether or not this is sciences, but it's clearly applied sciences. And if I go closer to that, um, we have all, 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 all the, the last years, we work also on, on changing the materials we're using. For that, we're using aluminum, but we're using also right chemicals to anodize these aluminiums, to make it far more resistant, outside of offering also an amazing designs. Now, if you even continue on that uh, logic, you can also say that when you do the, the phone, right, um, what we've been using here is, um, is a touch screens where essentially, again, we're leveraging the best of sciences and fundamental research uh, and findings in order to brought it to the large public. Not yet in Israel, soon to come. But basically, the concept is that this is a device which wouldn't exist if a few years ago, a few decades ago, some fundamental sciences would have been uh, not put in places. And then I can go on and on. So I can also talk to you about this wonderful MacBook Air which is a computer which is ultra thin, up to four millimeters thin. That's a fully, a real computer. It's been that, that you've got a color screen, you've got 80 gigs of uh, hard drives, you've got an amazing integrations of the chips, the communication chips. Uh, and obviously it's ultra light because it's a low use with no compromise to have in 1.5 kilos, what today uh, weights uh, four or five kilos. So all of that to tell you that a company like ours has developed a savoir-faire in leveraging the sciences applying it to basically consumer electronics, yesterday to the professional environments, uh, and to tomorrow, obviously, to the consumer uh, environments. But then you can ask yourself, outside of that, what is also our stance on, on science? And what is it that we are bringing to the world? Now, it's clear that we believe that technology uh, and science overall is doing something amazingly new to this world, right? Um, and you in Israel, you've got a ultimate example of that. We're offering for the broadbands the ability to communicate, to uh, propel the knowledge to know all around the world. There is no more limits. Either you are in the Sichuan in China, or you are in Vladivostok, or in Paris and Silicon Valley to be, be able to access the sciences. So that's really the other contributions that a company like us is doing, leveraging on the technology. And that has a massive impact, as you can imagine, right? The impact is that today, the barrier of entry uh, for anyone in the world, coming back to your concept of uh, global citizenships, are actually lower than they have been. And it's also allow you to think about the six billions, the nine billions today of inhabitants, able to access and to reduce the gaps of uh, the rich and the poor, the north and the south and so on. So I think the concept here is that, you know, we focus only on one thing's product because that's what we're good at, but we understand that our products are far more reaching in terms of the consequence that what they're offering. Now, once I said that, um, to answer to the second point, which is some of the orders that we have in two sciences. Today, clearly the order is still the ability we've got to miniaturize all of our, our products. We have gone a long way. When you're able to offer up to 160 gigabytes of hard drives on the iPod, when you're able to offer uh, iPhones with uh, 16 uh, gigabytes, you know 
that you've got something um, very unique. But we know also that on the uh, MacBook Air, we're only offering it as a hard drive, 80 gigabytes. Why? Because the SDD hard drives is actually costing a thousand dollars. He offer you more than 100, 100, 100 gigabytes of hard drives, but he needs a, a, it's very costly. So the other is really about the cost of the technology. It's about the integrations. And the last but not least, I think we need to continue to work on some materials. No, essentially what we have done as a company, we somewhat revolutionize all the key media assets. You may recall that on the music, the dematerializations of music allowed us to create a unique platform, iTunes. I'm sure you've heard of that, which is really a platform by which you can access to one, two, three, four, five millions of music, of songs. And by the click of a button, you can actually consume up to 25% of any songs as a try. And by another click of a button, you can essentially buy and own this uh, key IP, these key assets. Now, what we did in music, we are doing it now to videos. We're trying to. It's tougher because the IP related to that is also uh, more complex. So another order outside of the price, outside of the miniaturizations, is also related to the ability to deal with the IP, the ownerships of each of these sciences and these fundamental rights attached to any of these uh, creations. Now, you've done music. We're working on the videos. Um, the next things you could think of is about the books. Now, the only attempt we've got to date is what we call the audible books, which is basically audio books, by which you will have someone taking a book, reading it, and that you will be able to listen to it, because you're going to digitalize this content. We're not yet at the stage where we're using this good old paper, the, coming from the Gutenberg paradigms of a few centuries ago, and trying to really build yet what we call uh, e-books, right, the digital books. But that's clearly maybe one of the new uh, frontier uh, for us as an industry, for us as also media, media uh, content providers. And if we do so, it's clear that we'll go one step forward into the barrier of offering the best media assets, either the music, the sound, the audio, the, the visuals, the videos, or tomorrow the readings, right? The, the, the ultimate contents, what has been with uh, humans being for the last uh, uh, centuries to the, the large publics. Now, once you try to wrap that up, overall, you say that essentially a company like us, we are not definitely to the fundamental sciences. We are taking the best of what you scientists are offering us. We try to transfer that into a disruptive manner by changing business model, as exemplified by the PC 30 years ago, by the iPod uh, five years ago, today, right now, with the iTunes. But if we do all of that together, we believe that uh, science will contribute to overall uh, global happiness, uh, reduce uh, poverty, and better access to the knowledge, which we know that the access to knowledge is critical to achieve all of this goal. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you.